Welcome to Tell You Later, the show where you learn so little about so much and vice versa. Sincere thanks to all those who support us on Patreon. See the full list at the end of the show. By the way, there's always room for more. And don't forget to like and subscribe to their channel. We haven't got a title song for this show, so we're singing this thing instead. Okay. It's really just a substitute. Nonetheless, the melody may stay in your head. Oh, I hope so. Because it's a tune. It's a tune. You'll love to croon. You'll love to croon. Ah, but there's one thing you should know. We have to confess we do not possess a title song for this show. Ain't it peculiar? Believe it or not, we haven't got a title song for this show. <sighs> Oops. <laughs> Welcome to an adventurous... Tell you later. I am here with my co-host today. We could call her a guest, but I'm gonna call her co-host. Okay. Maybe we need to scoot a little closer. Yeah. Just a little bit closer. There we go. Melissa Garcia, my friend from Brazil who now lives in Portugal, who's actually very well known <laughs> in Brazil and in the Portuguese speaking world. There's so many cool things about you. Uh, she is Brazil's first animation voice director for original animation. She's in Sailor Moon, Sailor Star. She's been all, she, well, okay. Uh, how many things can I say about you in two seconds? In two seconds? No. <laughs> she's, she's been uh, uh, on a lot of cartoons, commercials, voiceover. She's been doing this for how many years? Mm, around 23, 25, I don't know. A long time. And I want to tell you our story. I think it's really cool. I was going to record this in a ca cafe because when you'll hear from our story when Melissa first contacted me, we recorded an interview with uh, America's preeminent voiceover director, Andrea Romano, mm -hmm. at a Starbucks in, mm -hmm. in Burbank. But we're going to go backwards. So first of all, thank you to the patrons who've been supporting the show. We really appreciate you. Um, we're going to talk about, just so you know, how we met, what she's doing, and what it's like to do voiceover uh, for her in Brazil, how it's different from the United States, because she's very familiar with the U.S., and what it's like moving here. Mm -hmm. And okay. she's a mom. And all that cool stuff. As you can see behind us is a Portuguese river. Oh, yeah. Rio Douro. In Porto. In Porto, yes. And it's important. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what she said. <laughs> um, there's a really cool bridge, but I don't know. No. We'll have to pick up the camera and no. move it. So it's pouring rain. The wind is blowing. It's like ugh, outside, except it really is beautiful. So you get to view. We're in an Airbnb. We are in Portugal. Yes. And uh, actually, we're about three hours away from where you live mm -hmm. in yeah. Lisbon. Yeah. Right. Actually, she lives outside of Lisbon, like in the countryside. Yes. So, tell us a story about how you first contacted me. All right. So, I was going to LA to do some voiceover workshops. And um, at the time, I think I was dubbing uh, Totally Spies. I'm in Totally Spies. She's in Totally Spies. I did Alex's voice in Totally Spies in English, and Melissa dubbed Alex in Portuguese. Brazilian yeah. Portuguese. In Brazilian Portuguese, yeah. So I was kind of looking after the actress that was uh, Alex's voice. So I got into her website and I emailed her saying, well, I'm voice of Alex in Brazilian Portuguese. I'm going to LA. I would like to meet you and, you know, say thank you in person for such a beautiful work. And it's, it's an honor and a pleasure to work with your work. And Katie emailed me back and the name and the subject of the email, I remember it was wow. <laughs> <laughs> How long ago is this? Around 10 years, I guess. 
10 at least. Yeah. 10 years ago and, and internet has come a long way in 10 years. Yeah. So this was, you know, email was like 20 years old maybe then. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, well. I mean, not 20 years old then, maybe 10 years old then. So to get an email from Brazil was pretty awesome. And shout out to my son, Adam, for making my website. Thank you. <laughs> There's a big echo in here. In Europe, carpet isn't very common. So you're just going to have to bear with the echo. Yeah. So And then, so, well... There was wow, the subject, and then Katie was like, do you want to stay in my house? And I was like, oh my God, well, let's Skype first and make sure that you like me. So it was kind of, I think between between us, it was kind of, we got friends like as pretty much as a kid that you see each other and you say, do you want to be my friend? Well, yes, I want to be your friend. So, all right, so let's be friends. <laughs> so we became great friends like this. And, uh, and so Melissa's done a lot of training in the U.S. Well, she's also a voiceover coach. She works with people in Brazil, especially all the time, yeah. uh, sharing what she knows because she's trained with a lot of people in the U.S. Yeah. And since we became friends, she's brought two groups of Brazilian voice actors to the United States yeah. to learn from what, Ned Blatt and Bob, Bob Bergen, Bergen, Andrea Romano. Andrea. She's, she's organized all these wonderful things. As a matter of fact, I got to do a workshop with her last week, last yeah. week uh, over Zoom with her Brazilian people, and I got to help coach them and they basically heard the same thing in English as they hear from her in Portuguese, yeah. but it was fun. So when you, you're, you're a trained stage actor. Yeah. How did you get into voiceover? Well, I loved cartoons and I, for some reason, I knew that it was um, an actor's job to work on cartoons. And uh, I actually wanted to be, you know, one of my dreams as an actor, I wanted to be a stage actor for life. But then I, in one of my rehearsals, I heard of someone that was, that took a dubbing training. So I took a dubbing training and then um, I started to work on dubbing. And at that time, um, there were, it was, it was 1997, so the cable TV was just like boom, and we had a lot of content to dub. And there were not enough girls, I was 17 at that, um, at that time, and there was not enough girls trained as an actor. You know what I just realized? And if you look at me on the camera and I look at you, it'll look like we're looking at each other. Oh yeah? Yeah, try I'm that. looking at the camera. You look at me and I'll look at you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, um, and that was pretty much it. So I, I got... Because you were young and they needed young voices yeah. for the cable. Yeah. And so I started to, you know, book my auditions for uh, shows. By the way, in Brazil, they pay people to audition. Yeah, most of the time, yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And we would like that, wouldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you, when you did Alex, did you have to try to match my voice? Yeah. Let's so you know yeah. saying? Like, I'm talking to you, but mm -hmm. I'm looking like I'm talking to you that way instead of turning this way so people see yeah. my face. Yeah. So I'm looking at you. Okay. So did you have to imitate my voice? Uh, well, not, not, well, be, not as much as, well, I did. I did, I, you know, I was trying to uh, get the acting right and maybe not the voice match because for Brazilians, it would sound too childish, too childish if I did Alex as a teen with the same pitch. Oh, really? Yeah, so... Um, did I sound childish? No, of course not. <laughs> but for Brazilian audience, my, you know, the pitch was going to sound weird. So I kind of, you know, I was, I, I can't remember how. So what, how did she say look out in Portuguese? Cuidado. So it was pretty okay. much my, yeah. So it was, it was pretty Your much voice. my voice. Yeah. Because I was pretty young. When did I you started. audition for all the spies? Or no, just, just Alice. Just Alice. Really? Yeah. Now, how did, how did you get to pick who you wanted to audition? Oh, no, the director picked 
and we don't have a lot of people auditioning for the same part. It was just three actresses mm -hmm. auditioning for it. And because they have to pay, so their budget probably no, doesn't. No. So, and actually, since I got replaced on Spies, you didn't, so you've been doing Spies I was I was replaced for the last season, too. Yeah, some reason, well, the studio called me and said, what's your uh, schedule for, for the two next weeks? And I was like, well, this is it. And they never called me back, so... Who knows? Well, so yeah. that's the wonderful world of voiceover. Mm -hmm. So you're you kind of created. You have you been training voice directors in Brazil? Yeah. Yes. How to direct because you learned from Ned, I guess, or Andrea, yeah. how to direct. Oh, because so so she came to the states and she said, "I want to meet Andrea Romano." Yes. And Andrea Romano and I have. N you know, known each other for years and years, or at that time we'd known each other, but I'd never worked for her. And I didn't know her that well. I knew her when she worked at Hanna Barbera. And you guys might know Andrea because she directed what? Name some of the things. Oh, Batman, Animaniacs, Pinky and the Brain. Stuff. Little yeah. small, small cartoons like that. Yeah. <laughs> So I found a way to get it because I wanted to help Melissa meet Andrea. And I think you were filming a documentary. So you wanted to meet her and you wanted to do something like what we're doing. Yeah. We're on your phone, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I found her office and I contacted her. Little did I know that Andrea was married to a Brazilian. Yeah. So when I said, somebody's here from Brazil, they want to meet you, she was like, yeah, sure. So I was like, whoa, victory for me. Yeah. Melissa's going to really love me for doing it. <laughs> we went to a Starbucks yes. and you interviewed her. Yeah. I watched the little dog that was sitting next to us who belonged to somebody to try to keep it <laughs> yeah. not. Barking. I didn't remember about the dog, but yeah, you're. And you did this yeah. for like a YouTube magazine. Can people see it? Yeah, well, it's all in Portuguese. Most of it well, is in Portuguese, it but the, subtitles? yeah, it does have subtitles for the English part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and your interview was about about voice acting for animation. Mm -hmm. It was the very start of uh, original animation in Brazil and as an industry because we, we started to work on Brazilian content around um, 2011, I guess. And then uh, we started to work as an industry. You know, we had a lot of uh, cartoons to work on, but the actors were not really trained and they didn't know how to, you know, work with the schedules of original animation and, uh, you know, Everything. Well, the difference is, and I think you find it too, I found it working with your guys and even people in the U.S. because I've been doing some directing and, and people even in English who are used to dubbing, like some of you out there are really interested in anime and that's always dubbed. And that's, you have limited, you have to get it in a certain time, you have to match the lip flaps. But when you're doing original animation, you get to be creative yeah, and create the character. Yeah. But a lot of actors who are used to dubbing don't understand that they can create, yeah, right? It's challenging for some. I used to do, you know, to adapt a work that has been done already by someone else. And when they have this freedom, it's like, it kind of, they get lost, some of them. But you know, I, I got some great feedback on uh, some actors that were that worked on radio shows, and you know, one of them, you know, he kissed me and he was like, "I felt like I was doing a radio show." Well, Thank you, kid. Well, that's what people ask because I'm on Adventures in Odyssey. A lot of you know a radio show, yeah. and animation is a lot like radio, and that's mm -hmm. why I like it because I like radio, and it's the theater of the mind. Yeah. So you have to be sort of an actor of the mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Because there's no picture. There's, no, you know, it's all your imagination, just like when you're listening. So I guess maybe listening to radio shows is good training for voice oh, yeah. acting. Huh? And now there's, um, there's a different way of uh, voice acting. It's called um, audio dramas. Yeah, yeah kind of like that's what the yeah. Avengers and Odyssey yeah. is. So yeah, so it's a good good thing to do. So are you doing to. a lot of audio dramas in Brazil now? I think, I I know there's some uh, has been done, but I'm, I didn't get involved too much 
because Which of all I, the animation that I'm working she's on. She's so busy, and her husband is too. Like he's yeah. like the Joe Cipriano of Brazil, right? He does TV promos. Yeah. And he also does coaching and directing and, and animating. Yeah. They're quite and original. Yeah. Great. And so has your daughter. Her daughter. She has a seven-year-old daughter. Has she worked on any shows? Yeah. Well, she voiced two of my characters as a baby. Oh. Yeah, that's cute, isn't it? Yeah. So what are the shows? Gerald's brother. It's not on US yet, but it's a pretty cool show. I'm hoping if they do it in English, I get to work on that. that <laughs> so you play just one character, the grandma? Yeah, a lot of. Oh, yeah. I, I play like five or seven. Five. Yeah, I guess five or seven different characters on that show. Do the grandma. She's so funny. Well, I'll do it in Portuguese, yes. and I'll try to um, translate it. So uh, she says. Abacate, come abacate, bem, pra ficar com cabelo bonito. Abacate. <laughs> In English, it would be avocado. Have some avocado, dear. It's good for your hair. <laughs> avocado. So cute. <laughs> Who else do you do on the show? Well, I do the main character's friend, Lada, and she sounds like that. And that would be, uh, in English, it would be, Gerald's brother, Gerald's brother, don't let anyone know that you got into a fight at school. Gerald's brother, Gerald's brother, don't let anybody know you got into a fight at school. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. 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 That would be fun. <laughs> yeah. So you decided to leave Brazil. Yeah, yeah. And move to Portugal for a lot of reasons. Yeah. And, um... Coming here, how, how, I mean, you're kind of working still yeah. for Brazil, yeah. on Brazilian time, which is, what, five hours? It's, now it's three hours behind. Three hours, that's not yeah. too bad, it's kind of like New York or California. Yeah, but California. it's going to be four, like, next month, it's going to be four hours behind. Yeah, so. well... That surprise. Did COVID help? Yes, a lot. Because I, when I came to Portugal, I was ready to, you know, get any job that was available for me. Uh, Not flipping hamburgers because you're a vegan. Yeah, something well, maybe like vegan burgers. You know, vegan yeah. burgers, yeah. But um, but then when COVID striked, striked, struck. Okay, when COVID struck, 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 struck. All right. When COVID struck, um, so nobody would be in studio. So I would be, you know, kind of, I, I, I still was a good option to hire as a director since nobody was going to be in the studio. And it was, and I think it was kind of a blessing to me because they, you know, we, we got to take out all of our prejudice against, you know, working remotely. remotely. Same yeah. like in the United States, but I have to ask you a question. If you were used to going to the studio, did you already have a home studio before COVID? No, I, I kind of, I had like a home scheme, <laughs> a home something that a I fort would... Fort blanket. Yeah, that I would, you know, do to... Blanket fort. Yeah. I would do any, I would do stuff to record, but I never recorded a show from home. So, uh, well, we put together uh, our two home studios at home because my husband works a lot. And so we, we kind of have two studios at home. And we had it designed by an audio engineer, you know, with good but quality. But in Brazil, or are you talking about here? Uh, yeah, here. What about in Brazil? Did you already have a microphone? Did you already have all that stuff? Well, I had the microphone, and I had, and I knew how to work with my space to, you know, to send my uh, audios for commercials or. Well, um, so did people do? I mean, because here in the states, a lot of people who are working a lot didn't have home studios, but yeah. it sounds like you had one in Brazil. Yeah, well, Why? I had four commercials. We didn't do a lot of uh, remote work for dubbing. Or but for commercials, for commercials, they did it yeah, 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 really? they did. Or it. you so, did your audition. Did they pay you for a commercial audition yeah. in Brazil, too? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so... It wasn't unusual for you to have a home set up. Yeah, no. But, but the for, animation dubbing people didn't because they didn't have that. The yeah, to yeah, dub. got yeah. it. Most of the yeah, most of the people on the industry and especially the dubbing artists 
didn't have home studios. But then they had to, and they ended ended up doing very good studios at home. And so I think it's something that people, and some people moved, you know, to the countryside. So now I think it's something that we'll have to, you know, the union will have to think about it carefully. Because you have a union in Brazil. Yeah. yeah, so does that, living in Portugal, they still, because Port, Portugal and Brazil have sort of a mutual mm-hmm. trade-off thing, right, for work? Yeah, well, but they don't have a union in Portugal. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I still work with the union rates in Brazil. And uh, if I need to work on Brazilian Portuguese, then I will, you know, I will work with the union rates in Brazil. So now you have a challenge to get into the Portuguese market, Mm -hmm. right? I know why you like this lighting. I'm looking at the camera. It's all on you. (laughs) I'm like in the shadows interviewing you. All right, that's fine. Do you want to change seats? Should we swap? (laughs) Sure. Let's see what happens. Yeah. (laughs) No, because you're my guest. You're the star. See? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Oh, well. Anyway. It's okay. I'm fine. fine. Yeah. (laughs) So, you have a challenge to get into the Portuguese market. Yeah. Well, what's your plan? Well, for now, uh, I want to talk to animation people and maybe voice direct. Yeah. They don't... uh, I think Portugal might start... But um, TV shows and because uh, they're very known for their shorts and they make very good animation shorts. And um, but I, I noticed that they don't have a voice director, and so maybe I'll go for that. And um, and um, I was invited to work on a show on a, a special uh, animation project as a Brazilian uh, character, so maybe working as a Brazilian character in Portugal and, you know, being part of that Brazilian representation in Europe is, uh, it sounds good to me. I guess it's like American accent versus a British accent, Mm -hmm. right? So can you do a believable Portuguese accent? Not yet, I guess. No, I gotta work on that. No. You can switch back. You look no, better it's all right. over there. Oh, it's it's all right. right. No, go, go, go. Okay. Yeah, they see me all the time. <laughs> okay. They see me all the time. So, how? I guess let's see. I want to ask you this. Uh, we were talking about so many things before, but when you're coaching people, what advice do you give to your student? Oh yes, you, I had notes. Yeah, but they're on the phone. Oh, that okay. I'm recording well, on. Yeah, but you had some really good advice. Yeah, well, for actors to be in the moment. Do you yeah, remember well, what you said? Yes. Uh, I think one of the most important things. Here's Scooter. This. Well, I think one of the most important things is that animation does not have psychological timing. Psychological timing. I never heard this before, but explain. It means that we we can change attitudes and, you know, make a big contrast on lines without psychological timing. So I think what you're saying is on camera, Maybe the transitions yeah. are a little longer. Yeah. But in animation, you and you they are quicker. You can change your attitude and your moods and stuff a lot quicker. Yeah. Because it's a faster medium. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You also said that we have to make more immediate choices. Oh yeah. It's yeah. not like theater. Yeah. No. I think we if. We usually don't have time to work on the background of the characters, and if you had not take three days to study your script and create a backstory yeah. and create all this stuff, yeah, how do we do it? Well, I guess. Well, but the thing is, actors sometimes need the process of creating, and I think on voice acting, maybe the result, the results are part of the process, and so we results are the process. Yeah. I'm thinking about it still. Yeah. Because we, we need to build our character on top of the results that we are getting and, you know, delivering to the directors. 
And uh, what does that mean in a practical sense? Let's say you're in the studio. What does that mean? Well, I think it means that if I got the, um, if I made, I have to make the, the my choices based on what's written in that episode and make my character re relate to the line of the dialogue and to the other characters that are, are around in scene, but I may not have the backstory with everyone else in the show. Or so That's what you said earlier. You have to take line by line. Yeah. And, and apply it And to relate to the line and how much, and how the line relate to the story and to other characters that are on the episode. And that's, and then you will get a result on that. And then the next episode, so you got something here, and then the next episode you will have some more clues to work Who on. Who you are. Uh, yeah. To yeah. enjoy the full episode, please support us at patreon.com slash later. Thanks a it lot. It kind of stopped raining, and I think we're going to go sightseeing, so we will tell you later. <laughs> Tell You Later is a Patreon-driven entertainment show. So what are you waiting for? Come on over. Join us at patreon.com front slash tell you later. Tesla, here we go now.